Hey everyone, I'm Richard, and today NVIDIA releases first details of the GTX 1060. It's card aimed squarely at the mainstream PC gamer, and it's got to be a good one in the wake of AMD's RX 480, which brought excellent 1080p performance with console beating visual quality, all for just $199. So the challenge facing NVIDIA is pretty strong here. But based on the green team's claims at least, 1060 should be a very, very interesting product. So before we analyze those claims in depth, let's look at the base specs. First up, we have a new Pascal processor here, codenamed GP106. Now, if we take a look at GTX 960's GM206, we see a number of similarities, principally that there are half the number of CUDA cores found in the top end product. So in the case of 1060, this gives us 1,280 shaders compared to 2560 in the 1080. And the boost clock here is confirmed at 1.7 gigahertz. Now here's the thing, GTX 960 wasn't quite as capable as it should have been, as it was hamstrung by a 128-bit memory interface. And on top of that, most of the models that shipped featured just two gigs of RAM just not good enough these days. GTX 1060 is different. Nvidia has taken no chances with memory bandwidth. We've got a 192-bit bus paired with eight gigabits per second modules. And on top of that, there's six gigs of VRAM available. Okay, so that's actually alleviated a lot of my concerns about the 1060. It's like Nvidia has recognized the limiting factors of the 960, the lack of RAM, the lack of bandwidth, and actually done something about it. And performance, along with price, well, that's really the aspect that's really going to make or break the GTX 1060. And here, Nvidia is making some pretty big claims, principally that you can expect GTX 980 level performance. Now, in a world where AMD's RX 480 offers ballpark 970 frame rates, that's very interesting. So let's take Nvidia at their word for now and see how things shake out. So here's GTX 1080. 1070 and 980 compared at 1080p. And yeah, we've added in the RX 480 for good measure. Now, of course, those more expensive cars will hit higher performance levels. And the 1080 is about 60% faster, 1070 about 35% or thereabouts. But you can see that there is a handy boost in performance over the 480, certainly in DX11. DX12, well, that's gonna be interesting to test, bearing in mind that AMD has some pretty big wins here. But of course, 980 performance, well, that is the target. The extent to which Nvidia can deliver that, well, that's the thing, isn't it? Well, we'll bring you the benchmarks as soon as we possibly can, of course, but one thing I will say about recent claims made by Nvidia, well, they promised Titan X performance for GTX 1070, and they actually over-delivered there. The 1070 was actually faster when you compare reference cards. So in a best case scenario, we could be looking at 980 performance, a bit of overhead, plus of course the overclocking potential. Typically speaking, the smaller the processor, the faster you can overclock it. So yeah, I do wonder if we can actually hit a sustained 2.1 gigahertz on this one, something I've not quite been able to do with a GTX 1080. So yeah, that's what we know for now on the GTX 1060. For me, the big unknown is the price. Now we're shooting this video a little ahead of time. So if Nvidia does reveal how much this thing's gonna cost, and I kind of think they have to, it'll be down in the video description below. We promise to have a full review and a blitz of benchmarks as soon as the embargo lifts. So until then, do like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss a thing. And I'll see you soon.